Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, before Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, there was Ted Turner's inconvenient cartoon series known as Captain Planet and the Planeteers. God, shoot me. This environmental pishit was designed to make kids more aware of the environment and tell them all the things that they can do to save the environment, but most likely won't. This show was awful, and I mean awful. Nobody liked it, nobody listened to what it had to say, so why do we keep watching it? I mean, this show was on for four seasons. That's a pretty long time by kids' show standards. So why do we keep watching this shit if it was so bad? Honestly, because there was nothing else that was on in this time slot. I think the only other thing that was on was Beekman's World. And God knows how much I don't want to be willingly educated by a Brooklyn scientist and a giant rat. He's an exterminator's nightmare! So we kept watching Captain Planet, much to our everlasting shame. Now for those of you who don't know the infamous story of Captain Planet, consider yourselves very fortunate. But hell, I'm gonna let Jordy from Star Trek tell you anyway. Our world is in peril. Gaia, the spirit of the Earth, can no longer stand the terrible destruction plaguing our planet. She sends five magic rings to five special young people. And five powers combined, they summon Earth's greatest champion, Captain Planet. Well, that's the Cliff Note version anyway. The whole story starts when the Earth spirit Gaia is awakened from her earthly slumber. Is it me, or does it look like she's always in a perfume commercial? After she wakes up, she sees those poor, silly humans who are destroying the Earth. It's those poor, silly humans again. So she sends out five magic rings to five teenagers. Kwame, from Africa. Guy, from Asia. Linka, from the Soviet Union. Mati, from South America. And Wheeler, from North America. Wheeler? Wheeler? Some parent was actually cruel enough to name their kid Wheeler? The only Wheelers I know about are the Wheelers from Return to Oz. And the further I stay away from them, the better. You know, this has been a very weird day. One minute I'm a kid from Brooklyn, the next minute I'm some sort of cut-rate superhero. Oh, I think I'm gonna hate Wheeler. I mean, the other characters are passable, but this guy is just obnoxious. What's that supposed to mean? It's like if Tony Danza got kicked in the nuts and was looking around for the guy who did it. Hey, yo, who kicked me in the nuts? Each of them are given a magic ring that controls one of the Earth's elements, like Earth, Wind, Water, and Fire. That lot of good that'll do us in a fire fight. Wheeler, don't say fire until you mean it! Oh, I see. Every time Wheeler says fire, a giant flaming fireball pops out? Man, how lame is that? That's like me getting hit in the head with a ruler every time I say it. <laughs> what, I get hit in the head with a ruler every time I say it? Okay. I guess I'm not going to say ruler. But what about Mati? What's his magic power? Mine is heart. I can sense you all. Heart? Heart? They get fire, wind, and water? I get fucking heart? What a ripoff! Why can't I get any of the flashy powers and stuff into a heart? Are you kidding me? What a fucking coup! I mean, you can't do anything with heart. What, you make people feel better? Who gives a shit? I mean, this kid totally got ripped off. I mean, how do you think he feels about this whole thing? I recently sat down with Mati this past week to find out just how he felt about this situation. I'll tell you how I feel about the whole situation. I'm fucking pissed off, man. You know? Uh, what kind of kid wants to have heart as a power? I mean, I can't believe it. Jesus! Yeah, but surely there must have been some good that came out of this. After all, you were bringing people together. Fuck people! Bringing people together doesn't help you sell toys. It just makes you a pussy. A pussy! I am a pussy! Well, why do you think you got heart and everyone else got the flashier powers? Because I'm Indian. It's all Ted Turner's plan to keep the Indian man down. Fucking cocksucker! Wait a minute. I thought you were from South America. What's this crap about you being Indian? Um. You're not the real Mati, are you? Um, the thing about that is, uh... Hurt! Oh! The fucking idiot! I am nothing but trouble. I mean, how is hard even supposed to work? You just say hard and all of a sudden people feel better? Give me a break. I mean, look at this thing. Are you telling me that this little thing is actually supposed to make people feel better? I see. Oops. Wrong ring. Alright, here it is. This is the ring that's supposed to make everybody feel hunky-dory. Oh, wow. Actually, this, this is kind of nice. I feel so relaxed and pleasant. 
So what if I don't have fire, wind, or water? It's not like I have to be ruler of the earth. Damn it! Alright, so you get the idea about the rings and everything, but where does Captain Planet come in? Well, when they do combine their powers together, they unleash Captain Planet, who kind of looks like Silver Surfer's gay brother who has a summer home in Malibu. He's sucking the oil back! Oh. Guess I better make like the wind and blow. Captain Planet's main job is to save the Earth while also making as many horrible puns as possible. And now I'm gonna rain on your parade. It's time to tie up this person. You do know smoking's bad for your house. Nothing like a wild ride to get rid of an old flame. Time to branch out. I'm feeling fine. How about you? worse than I thought. I know what you're saying to yourself. Please tell me that there's something that can kill him. Well, thank heavenly god there is. Captain Planet's only weakness is, you guessed it, pollution. You drown him in oil, smoke, or toxic waste, and he goes down like a government bill to save the rainforest. The only way to save him is to clean him off so he can regenerate from the sun. Oh great, he's a solar-powered Captain Planet. You know, they always sound great until the payment plans come in. We'll see about that. Seriously though, how hard is it just to throw toxins on a person? This shit's easier to find than kryptonite. So you might be asking yourself, what kind of villains does Captain Planet fight anyway? Well, of course, it's rotten billionaire tycoons who want to do nothing but pollute the world. All except Ted Turner, of course. He is Jesus. And of course, they all have those traditional cosmopolitan names, like Hoggish Greedly, Verminous Scum, and Sly Sludge. <laughs> Seriously, would you ever do business with a person named Sly Sludge? It's like marrying a woman named Nasty McSpends Money. It just has bad news written all over it. Please, go away! The other strange thing about these villains is that a lot of them actually have celebrity voices, like John Ratzenberger, Martin Sheen, Jeff Goldblum, Tim Curry, and even Meg Ryan. How the fuck did they get Meg Ryan? Did she own back taxes or something? I mean, it makes no sense. But what's even stranger than that is that they actually make the villains look a lot like the celebrities themselves, like Meg Ryan's yellow hair, Tim Curry's sunken in eyes, and the less I say about Jeff Goldblum, the better. And that's also Whoopi Goldberg as the Earth Spirit Gaia. Now here's what I don't understand. If she's supposed to be the most powerful essence of the Earth, why doesn't she just stop these polluting a-holes herself? Don't worry, Planeteers. I will be with you in spirit. Oh, spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, from my past experience, spirit has usually meant a coward chicken pansy who doesn't want to get hurt and would rather sacrifice the lives of teenagers so that she doesn't miss her favorite reruns of Gilligan. But hey, that's just my past experience. Gee, I didn't think of that. You may also notice that anytime there's trouble, it's Kwame who initiates calling Captain Planet. Let our powers combine. Let our powers combine. Let our powers combine. Well, why does he get to call the shot? I mean, that's a lot of power. Can you imagine if he didn't want to say those words? Oh man, we're in a tight jam. Uh, Kwame, don't you have something to say? I'm not going to say it. Not until you apologize for stiffing me on the bill at Olive Garden. Oh, come on, man, I was short on cash. And I look like Don fucking King to you? <sighs> All right, I'm sorry. Then let our powers combine, douche. What? Nothing. Weird. Most of these episodes follow the same pattern. Some evildoer is polluting the earth for the sole purpose of being a douche. The kids come to help, can't quite handle it, so they call on Captain Planet to save the day. But not all these episodes just focus on the environment. There's actually one or two episodes that handle different subject matters. So Captain Planet, what other issues are you going to talk to grade school kids about? AIDS? You tested positive for the HIV virus. <sighs> All right, so Captain Planet is going to talk about AIDS. God help us. So apparently, Verminous Scum has an evil plan to make high schoolers really hate this one kid who happens to have AIDS. Just listen to his foolproof evil plot. Once we let people know the kid has AIDS, we can panic the whole town! See, when people panic, they don't think. If they don't think, they stay stupid about AIDS and it can spread. And once it spreads far enough, we take over the Earth! Makes sense to me! There are only a few ways to contract the virus. Using drugs with needles, unprotected sex, or he could have gotten it from that blood transfusion he had a few years back. These kids are just learning how to spell blue! Don't tell them about drugs or unprotected sex! What the hell's wrong with you? Who cares how I got it? It stinks! Ugh. There you have it, folks. The understatement of the century. AIDS stinks. And here's another thing I just found out. Hitler was a dork. 
Naturally, the kid's coach comes in to try to give him some advice. You want to talk? Nothing to say. It's all over. Not the way I hear it. Coach, I've got AIDS. Wrong. You're HIV positive. Big difference. They probably won't even let me play in the big game. Wrong again, Andrews. You're going to be playing in that game. And anybody who says otherwise will have to deal with me. Whoa. Coach is a bit of a psycho. Soon, Verminus starts spreading rumors and lies about AIDS. Did you hear about Todd Andrews? He's a closet mumbler? Soon everybody, even the adults, are calling for the hanging of this kid with AIDS. If only they knew that an environmentally aware children's cartoon could show them the error of their ways. Of course, Captain PSA comes along to help set the record straight to the people. I think these people need a little education about the HIV virus. May I have your attention, please? This is gonna be painful. A lot of you are worried about AIDS. Give them the facts, coach. You can't get AIDS from casual contact. You've been led astray by lies. Todd hasn't changed. That's right. Ah! He's the same kid who played his heart out for you right here on this court last week. Deal with the real, people. Get the facts. The power is yours. And this speech is terrible. So what are you going to do? Turn your back on him? Or give him the chance he deserves? This is like the most easily led crowd in the world. Hey, everybody. Childbirth is bad. But genocide is good. Another issue that's kind of hard to see Captain Planet take on is gang violence. You heard right, gang violence. Just listen to some of the streetwise back talk. We hear what's happening here now. Don't sweat it, dog. We hitting the spot to score some gap. Just show us food, they can't do us. It's R.I.P. time for you. Yo, yo, I'm gonna bust a wicked darn dookie in the back of your behind, mildly annoying acquaintance. And the way they convey the terror of gang violence is by having pictures of civil rights leaders posted all throughout the cartoon. They never really reference them, they just kind of put them there. I mean, look at this. They don't say anything, they don't do anything, they just kind of appear and then disappear. Um, deep? Gee, I hope there's some retarded teenagers in a flying blue man in gay underwear that can sum this all up. Can't you see? It's time to stop wrecking and start really educating. Peace or war, it's your choice. That would have been the funny ending. But instead we get a look into the gang members' heads as they analyze all that the civil rights leaders have fought for. I guess this has good intentions, but some of these images get pretty damn graphic. Uh, kids, you might want to switch it over to Sesame Street right now. These people don't know what they're doing. So much for drama. And of course, at the end of every episode, we had to listen to that god-awful song that we all hated to listen to, and yet we could never get out of our heads. Captain Planet, he's our hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. Though there was that one guy who always summed up my feelings towards the show at the end. You pay for this, Captain Planet! Alright, Ted Turner, you've made your point, and we'll make a deal with you. We'll start cleaning up the planet, and you stop making these god-awful cartoons! That way the planet can be nice and clean so that you can become supreme ruler. God damn it! I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Ruler! Ha! I really hate this episode. Captain Planet!